Okay, hi everybody. Thank you all for joining me for our last uh, Reiki teachings of the season, of the spring season. We're going to take a little bit of time off and uh, get set up for the next season uh, before we continue. So today I wanted to touch on a really, really common topic that I hear about everywhere. I see it in TV shows, movies, and it's one of the more common topics that are seen uh, when you look up frequently asked questions uh, about Reiki, and it's how do I meditate? How to meditate? And so there's lots of different ways and techniques and I always find that it's not expressed the best uh, to the people who are looking for a how-to guide on how to set themselves up in a way that they can sit down and relax a bit and get in touch with those inner thoughts and personal assessment feelings as well as um any emotional breakthroughs that you can receive when you take that time to sit and meditate and contemplate over, you know, some of these issues that have been affecting you throughout your life in some cases, depending on what you're meditating over. So I wanted to take a moment to explain what came to me through a really deep meditation and um, how to explain it best in a quick and pretty little package so that anybody who might be new or even if you're more advanced and in, into meditation how to really utilize the room that you're in and make the best of creating a moment the best way to meditate and um, as well as live in the present moment, being present in the moment, is to learn how to create a moment for yourself. And the best way that I like to do this is when you make the room that you're in come to life. If you like to sit down and imagine that the room itself is alive kind of like beauty and the beast and all the items in the room can come to life and they have their own little personalities and their own little uh, role to play in your ceremony and you can really get specific with how you want to dress you can get specific with the kind of items or tools or uh, actions basically you're setting up a room for your own personal presentation and the items there are how you're going to interact with the situation that you're contemplating and you can use this in such a wide variety of ways to help get clarity around situations if you're uh, doing the job interview thing you can set up your own private meditation job interview where you would again dress the part of the position that you're looking to fill, you would put on the kind of music that would be heard in that kind of position and set up a little room so you can sit and like when you were a kid, kind of play pretend, put your costume on and really get lost in your head. And when you have this kind of dedication to the set, um, rather the setting, the room that you're in, your setting, uh, it really helps you tap into your set, your mindset at the time. And when you have the room specifically set up and organized the way that you want to use it for your meditation, you then go into like a dry run of the situation that you want to manifest. <clears throat> you know, one example of this that 
is rather unique is a while back, maybe two months ago, I did a really deep uh, nighttime meditation. And I was in the bedroom uh, in child's pose on the floor, listening to outside sounds, to relaxation sounds to help people sleep. And it was wolves howling. And I went into this really deep, vivid uh, daydream, so to speak, of what it would be like to be laying on the floor, laying with wolves, sleeping with wolves. And here I am two months later, and I found myself last night having this memory of this deep meditation where I'm now laying in the same spot on the floor only now I'm cuddling with a big white husky wolf-like looking dog that has joined our family. And I can't help but see how being able to visualize that from a very inward third eye point of view helped make it real. It helped make me know that it was something that could be attainable. You need to be able to touch things into existence and that's where our creative spark comes in where we again use music and sound to verbally describe pictures and give you visuals of something we have all these unique skills to create different scenes. If you think of um, a meditation room as you are watching a scene in a stage play, what you'll find in this kind of mindset when you're interacting with the room, you become aware of what some people specifically refer to as spirit guides or guardian angels. Uh, Terrence McKenna called them McKenna elves, where people describe that when you're in this mindset, uh, this state of meditation, that the room becomes alive and you interact with it, but not just through the items, you are then dancing with the room, the ambience, the physical energy, the vibe. And once you can tap into that feeling that the room is a character it's a person kind of it's something there to help you you know you're tapping into those reiki energies that come to you for healing and in reiki you know it said that we're just the hollow bone that the energies are being transferred through and to where it is that they're needed and so we then become the tool that can channel the energy in the room into a new and positive purpose. You can make the room a romantic room by setting up candles every you know, few feet or few inches. You can make the room a training room and you can make it a very serious um, serious room for martial arts and uh you know kind of physical that kind of physical training you can give it a gym vibe and you know each room set up depending on how much attention to creative detail that you give is how you use your energy and your physical actions to make these dreams come to life and it really just starts with one room and it's a really fun and unique tool that I like to use. And then you can play with them. You can figure out what kind of scenes that you want to set up. And the more creative you get, you find that your house then starts to come alive with all these, you know, different feelings and different energies. And, you know, even our backyard, how we've been doing the gardening and setting up obstacle courses for the kids. It's just a very wonderful, welcoming uh, little Zen garden. And there's so many animals that all come and 
just chill out with each other, the chipmunks and the squirrels and the bunnies. And I've kind of gone over a list of what we, uh, what I've seen in the backyard and a few other videos. And it's just a very tranquil scene where you can just come and enjoy. And then I like to feel that because of that Zen Reiki healing atmosphere, the animals then get healed and healing as well. And um, this is a very powerful tool that I would recommend to people, uh, couples specifically, you know, if you're having communication issues, you can reorganize and rearrange the room to have that space with your significant other. If you need to have a ceremony together, if you need it to be more romantic, if you need it to be happier, if you need the room itself to be more exciting, more vibrant. Um, you know, some people like to keep their houses painted very, very plain and uh, bland colors, which makes it easier when you sell it that the new owners can, you know, paint it whatever color because it's already neutral. But for yourself to make the room come to life, give it that energy that you want. Find an emotion that you go in. And again, the types of emotions, if you're building a library, it's going to be a very different type of setting tools and props and, uh, you know, clothing that you would keep in that room versus a workout training area um, versus a kitchen. Kitchen is always a really fun room because you get to incorporate different types of rooms into the kitchen and the kitchen can then become the alchemy station it can then become the chemistry station you know if you're a parent and you got kids that like to make slime and make volcanoes the kitchen can become a romantic setting the kitchen is a, a vast um vastly transparent room that has so many different purposes and it's one of my favorite rooms to work with another room really fun that not too many people think of is the bathroom it's the bathroom that you carry with you every single place that you go you will always have what you will need in that bathroom no matter what room or location that you're in so the bathroom serves as a really good uh, meditation spot as well especially if you have a shower in a bathtub it's an ideal spot uh, especially you get good acoustics if you're doing things like tuning forks you if you're using things like the singing bowls um, you get better sound resignation in that kind of a room um, versus like a carpeted living room that's filled with furniture um, you know you can make dance studios. I've seen people do, if you're a music person, you can have the band set up. And the room then becomes who you are and you then become the room, especially if you're talking about a room that you're utilizing every day for your own personal lifestyle, uh, choices and decisions. And if you give a room the proper amount of care and attention, it can be a very, very special, very sacred place. And it carries that energy and people who enter into the room uh, get to share in that vibration and that mindset that you get when you are experiencing those kind of emotions um, just based off of the tranquility of the room. And once you know how to, again, be creative, decorate, and kind of play pretend. Uh, you can customize it to any type of ceremony and any type of ritual that you are looking to practice. And basically once you can set the tone in one room, you then have the skills to set up um, 
things like meetings and when you bring other people and get them involved and um, you know how to set the tone, you can set the pace for the party or the event or the conversation. And it helps you give your own self-assessment and you can make your own notes from what you learn experience and the downloads that you get from meditating in this kind of setting doing these kind of dry runs um and you get to learn how to apply them and expand them out to include other people and then eventually the things that you are meditating over are physically there with you and it's such a, a fun and unique way to just trial run uh, your vision of what you want to achieve in life and how to be successful because once you can see it it's like a interactive vision board that you sit down and just really hammer out how step by step this is going to look and how it's going to work um, these are really key tools that i have used to help me meditate and have those kind of um, deep clarity breakthroughs when I'm meditating. And because this was one of the most common questions that I, I hear is people asking, how do I meditate? Um, I really wanted to give you guys my <clears throat> two cents on that. as well as let you know how I find it's personally helpful in my life and how, like, I have spoken to Ashley about this a few times. Um, we really do have an intention to sit down with, like, a lot of cash and a lot of money and set the room up to really feel rich and wealthy and tap into that money frequency. And, you know, not specifically for any purpose of doing photo ops and um, trying to look like something we're not or impress somebody that we're, again, not. It's to set your mindset to be able to see yourself surrounded by money, wealth, surrounded by the things that you love. And usually everything in a room is should be everything that you love and if you have things in a room that you hate and can't stand you really gotta sit and question wonder why you keep holding on to it and what it is that you're holding on to you know emotionally and biochemically that stress gets trapped inside us if we don't know how to release it and in a roundabout way, this is how and why spring cleaning becomes such an important element of our growth that every year in the springtime when all the trees are growing and the plants are sprouting and the flowers are blooming, uh, we are also getting rid of everything that we don't need so we can blossom into what we need to be for that year as beautifully and healthy as we possibly can. And I will see you all next season.